continuing our look at aggregate expenditures and we've looked at C now that we've looked at consumption spending uh, we can also look at savings because consumption spending and savings are highly related so notice that when national income is zero savings is negative in this example it's a negative 65 this is what is called dis savings so notice when our income is zero we are pulling money out of our savings account in fact in this example we're pulling out minus 65 five of those dollars goes to buy goods and services the other 60 goes to pay taxes because when you have income there are three things you can do with it you can spend it you can save it you pay net taxes so we're pulling out sixty five dollars out of savings five goes to consumption and in this example sixty is going to net taxes as income increases the amount we put into savings increases we go from pulling money out to putting money in so let's plot this information on a graph so again here we have national income on the horizontal and on the vertical now we have savings when national income is zero savings is a negative 65 when national income is a hundred savings is a negative 45 when income is 200 savings is a negative 25 and we keep going until we have income of 800 in which case savings is 95 so we're connecting our line here our dots here you should come up with a somewhat straight line and we can turn that into a formula for savings just like the consumption function the savings function is autonomous plus induced so the autonomous portion is the amount of savings or dis savings you do when you have zero income so when we have no income we're pulling sixty five dollars out of savings as our income increases we put more into savings and we know that because this graph has a positive slope just how much is that slope well we can calculate it and it's going to be the change in savings divided by the change in income so our savings goes from a negative 65 to a positive 95 so we do 95 minus a negative 65 when you subtract a negative the number becomes added income goes from 0 to 800 so 800 minus 0 so our slope here 95 now plus 65 is 160 the change in income is 800 160 divided by 800 is 0.2 this slope has a name it is called the marginal propensity to save and what it tells us is for every additional dollar of income we save 20 cents so remember that our MPC that we found so MPC was 0.6 we've just found an MPS of 0.2 by having those two bits of information we know that the marginal tax rate must be 0.2 as well because when you have income you can do three things with it you can spend it you can save it you pay net taxes so if for every dollar of income we spend 60 cents and we save 20 then the remaining 20 cents must go to taxes